Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2 again. And in this lesson, we simply go one paragraph further into the text. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17. I want us to cover four verses, 17 through 20, the Lord willing. Peter is continuing to talk about submission in the Christian life. And tonight, in this lesson, he pursues, he develops what is often called a household code. Get those words. A household code. Ancient literature overall, secular literature including, often would discuss how people ought to behave at home. Household code. Peter here is going to discuss the behavior of slaves. How slaves should respond to their masters. Oh, oh whether he's a good master or an evil master, how a Christian slave, servant, should respond. Elsewhere, he will discuss how wives are to respond to their husbands, and vice versa, husbands should love and treat their wives. Paul follows the household code uh, in his writings, uh, even to the point of children to parents and parents to children. Household code. Please get that word, that terminology. And again, we're going to come across, as we did in our last lesson, uh, the idea of honoring the king, the governor, those in high office. I came across a sentence I'd like to share with you. Though we may not be able to respect their politics, <laughs> I know what he's talking about. Though we may not be able to accept their politics or their practices, listen to this, we must still respect their office. We must still respect the office they hold. Senator, again, governor, prime minister, if you please. And, 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 and as Peter develops this idea of submission, here particularly in our homes, he is not, how will I put this? He is not simply talking about submission in government, the governmental areas of life. He believes that we Christians have a duty to submit even at church. Even at church, Brother Bagwell, listen to this. Ephesians 5.21. He's leading up to one of his great, Paul here, Ephesians 5, leading up to one of his great church passages, paragraphs. And he says to us Christians, submitting yourselves one to another, we Christians, submitting yourselves one to another, in the fear of God. Listen to Romans 12, 10. We Christians, be kindly affectioned one to another. Kindly affectioned there, it uses the word storge. It is a rarely used Greek word that means family love. If I'm saved and if you're saved, somebody get an amen ready. We're in the same family. Be kind, Romans 12, 10. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. That's an interesting verb. In honor, preferring one another, it means you go first. Pro ago, P R O A G O, you go first. You lead the way. I will show you difference and respect. And, and, and this idea of submission is so important. Peter is giving a good deal of this epistle, 1 Peter, to, to the theme of submission in the life uh, of the Christian. If a young person, a child, let's go ahead and let him be 10 or 12 years old. If that child hates his parents, 
is not submissive to his parents, I'm going to guarantee you something. He will also be a rebel at school. He will not submit to his teacher. And if he ever plays sports, he will not submit to his coach. And if he ever gets a driver's license, he will not submit to the officer, the policeman, the officer of the law. And you know where that's leading? He will not ultimately submit to Almighty God. He'll be of the attitude, I'll never bend my knee to him. Of course, he's wrong because every knee's going to bow. Every tongue's going to confess someday that Jesus is Lord. Just those few introductory remarks. Verse 17. Let me read it to you. I, I love it. It has four short sentences. That's the way I want to put it. Four short sentences. Here we go. Honor all men. Honor, and that, uh, the verb there, uh, all four of these verbs are imperatives. They're commands. Tameo. T-I-M-A-O. Honor all men. It means put some value. Realize the worth of all men. Second sentence, love the brotherhood. Now, this word love is agapeo. It uses agape love, God's love, unselfish love, uh, generous love, uh, unconditional love, everlasting love. Love the brotherhood. That's the word adelphos. Love your fellow Christians. Fear God. Fear God. And uh, the word there is phabeo. Phabeo or phobeo probably would be the way the Greek teacher would say phobeo. And what does it mean? Fear in the sense of reverence, honor, I'll go this far, worship, almighty God. And then the last of verse 17, and honor the king. Honor the king, the president, the prime minister, the premier, honor the the king. I want to show you something. In verse 17, the first verb is honor, to meo. The last verb is honor, to meo. And watch this. First verb, honor all men. The last verb, honor the king. Peter here is not putting the king above. Uh, I am to honor and respect all of my fellow citizens on planet earth. And I am to also honor the king, the one in high, the insinuation, political authority. This is Bible encouragement. Often in ancient literature, Greek and Roman literature, there would be paragraphs of instruction. I'm going to go further. Paragraphs of encouragement, and they would consist of short, pithy, that means wise sentences. Paul does this in 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Despise not prophesying. Those are terms and patterns of encouragement. And that's what Peter is doing here in verse number 17. Notice he goes... Verse 17, the first half of the verse. Anyway, Peter goes from generalities to specifics. The broad view to the narrow view. Preacher, what do you mean? Honor all men. But then a stronger verb. Love the brotherhood. Love your brothers and sisters. Preacher, that sounds like uh, Peter thinks we might put a priority on loving our brethren. Galatians 6.10. Let me read it to you. Galatians 6 10 Paul writing under the guidance of the Holy Spirit as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men be good to everybody but especially particularly chiefly especially to those who are of the household of faith be good to everybody but if you have to make a choice be sure you're kind and gracious and merciful to your brothers 
and your sisters in Christ. That is an interesting, excuse me, my fingers get dry and I can't turn my Bible like I, like I want to. Yeah, but preacher, oh, no, honor the king. He said, fear God, but just honor the king. You know why? Get me a name in Because God is almighty. No king is almighty. God demands and deserves our worship. No king has the authority to demand our worship. In Peter's day, in Paul's day, there was a, uh, what did they call it? An emperor cult. A group of people that actually worshipped the emperor. And then as the Roman Empire developed, well, they didn't develop, crumbled, began to fall apart, became more and more wicked, the emperors began to, the emperors began to say, I am God. The emperors would say, I am the son of the God and demand worship from the citizens of the Roman Empire. And most everybody went along with it, but not a Christian. No, no, no. The Christian will worship God, fear God, but he'll only honor the position of the They will not bow down and declare Caesar Lord. That is simply a fact of history. And uh, this is what Peter is saying. If you're going to have a good testimony, if you're going to live for God and be able to win some people to Jesus, you're going to have to have some good manners. You're going to have to have a ton of respect, treat people with dignity, and you can't go around and be subversive and a traitor and a rebel. Preacher, can you sum that up? I can. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Listen to Jeremiah. I, I thought of this verse as I was studying last night. Jeremiah 29, 7. Jeremiah 29, 7. The Jews have been taken captive into Babylon. They are slaves in a foreign land and they'll be there for decades. Jeremiah said when you get up there, seek the peace of the city where God has caused you to be carried away. Seek the peace of the city and pray to the Lord for that city. Lord, protect America. Lord, America doesn't have good sense anymore. We're rebelling against you. But God, uh, because America has sent missionaries, because America has had so many Bible... God, would you, would you protect America a little bit longer? Pray for the city. For in the peace of the city, you will have peace. That's the idea that Peter is developing in verse 17. Now, we're going to go to verses 18 and 19 and 20. There is a nexus. There is a unity. There is a connectivity in these verses. And, and here's the common denominator. Peter is now talking to slaves. That may be too strong a word uh, for our culture today. He is now talking to servants. And I know what somebody's going to say. Well, if the Bible was the book it's cracked up to be, uh, it would have railed against slavery. I want you to hear me and hear me well. It is the Bible. It is a group of godly Christians that got rid of slavery in England. Ever heard of William Wilberforce, a saved man? Study his life in America. Even Abraham Lincoln professed to know the Lord Jesus uh, as his Savior. Save people. The book of God uh, in Christ. We're all equal. Male and female bond. That means slave and free. In Christ we are one. Hallelujah. One Lord. One faith. One. It's the Bible that got rid of slavery. But here in Peter's day, in Paul's day, if they would have come out against slavery strong, 
They didn't support it. They didn't condone it in these verses. Had they come out supporting it strong, it would have been considered treason. Either one of them or both could have been thrown in jail and executed for trying to. That would have been considered attacking the economy. That, that would have been considered unpatriot. Remember, the Roman Empire, it is believed, had up to 60 million slaves in its citizenry. And yeah, a lot of the slaves were citizens. We better get to verse 18. Servants, servants. Now, the word that is used here is surprising. I'm thinking it will be the word doulos. It is not. That's the word for a bond slave. And, and, and a good word it means tied up, you're a slave. But here, oiketes, oiketes. It comes from oikos, which a little word, a, a little Greek word that means the house or the household. He is particularly addressing household slaves. Now, there were slaves that worked out in the fields. They're not the precise subject of these three verses. Uh, there were slaves, believe it or not, history bears it up, that served as physicians, as tutors and teachers uh, in, in the schools. Uh, uh, there were slaves that rode the grain boats that had come in, that, that uh, uh, coming in from Egypt to bring uh, uh, food for the Roman Empire, all kinds of slaves. Here, household slaves. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. That uses a verb we had last lesson. I'm not going to spend a, a lot of time discussing it. Be subject. Hupo tasso. Be obedient. Get in your place and stay there. Do what you're told to do and do your best in the process. Hupo tasso. And of course, it goes without saying, uh, we are dealing here with a very strong verb present participle what uh, here is not an imperative what does that mean constantly consistently be subject to your master get this the word masters despotes it gives us the english word a despot a dictator often a ruthless ruler be subject to your masters with all fear with all fear and that's phobos gives us the word phobia with, with deep respect and an abiding fear. Obey your masters. Be so, don't you be a rebel. Don't you be, don't you be guilty of trying to uh, lead an uprising against your master. By the way, 1 Samuel 15, rebellion is this the sin of witchcraft. When God looks at rebellion, it is as the sin of witchcraft. I'll get 1 Samuel 15. I believe it's verse 23. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Wow. Preacher Bagel, what? Yeah, the kid that rebels against daddy and will rebel against his teacher and his coach and the policeman and anybody else that tries to tell him what to do, including the preacher, including Almighty God, witchcraft. The devil is behind that kind of sheer stark uh, rebellion. Be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good, not only to the better group of masters, not only to the kind uh, masters. Uh, the word there for good is agathos. They are more gentle. They are more respectful of their slave. Not only do the good and gentle, and the word uh, there for gentle sort of has the idea patient, moderate, kind in, in that sense, but also subject yourself also to the forward. Or in our King James Bible, to the forward. To the forward. And what in the world does that mean, Preacher Bagel? Uh, the word is scolios, S-K-O-L-I-O-S, scolios, and it means crooked. Two times in our King James Bible, it's only used four times, two times it's translated crooked. They are crooks. They're not good men. They're liars. They're to subject yourselves to your masters, good or bad, be 
obedient to them. That, my friend, is a household code if I have ever heard one. Let me, let me say this about those household code, codes. Paul's got them in Ephesians 6, 5 through 9. Colossians 3, 22 through 25. 1 Timothy 6, a pastoral epistle. 1 Timothy 6, 1 and 2. And again in Titus 2, verses 9 and 10. Why all this emphasis on the home? Listen to Brother Bible. Listen very carefully. Even Rome, in her degradation, even Rome in her last years as an empire knew the importance of having strong families and strong homes that could contribute to a strong society, community, society, country, and government. In America, where leadership has lost its mind, in America, where leadership can no longer think logically, uh, in America, where it looks like God may have turned this country over to leaders with a reprobate, disapproved, rejected in the eyes of God, my, we're minimizing the home. There's effort underway today to destroy the home. Uh, uh, there's an effort to promote divorce, to promote immorality, to promote adultery, and to promote it, it, destroying the home. Not Rome. They said we want a strong... Preacher, you believe a lot of these say, slaves got saved? I do with every fiber of my... I'll give you an example. The book of Philemon. A slave named Onesimus. He ran away from his master, uh, uh, Philemon, up in the city of Colossae. Came to the biggest city he could find to get lost in the crowd. And somehow in God's grace, he came across the apostle Paul, Onesimus. Paul won him to Jesus. Onesimus got saved. Paul sends him back to the church at Corinth. Sends him back to his master to apologize and, and, and make things right. Multitudes of slaves were saved. And in these churches, in the early church history. Mm -mm -mm. We better go to verse 19. Preacher, that's a pretty stark command. Obey your master whether he's good or bad. Obey your master whether he's kind to you or brutal to you. Why? Why? Verse 19 gives us the why. Here is the why of Christian submission. By the way, I'm going to say something. Because if I don't, we'll lose connection with the lesson. Not just slaves. This, in a way, describes the employee-employer relationship in our country today. You mean that uh, I as an employee am to be submissive and to obey my employer? That's the spirit of this text. It doesn't say it directly, but it says it in the spirit of the text. I am to submit to those who are over me. As I mentioned last lesson, I am to obey the speed limit. The policeman is my authority. And he can enforce those laws. I am to pay my taxes. Uh, the government is my authority. I can be penalized if I do not obey the law in that area. Yes. Yeah. I learned this too. Let me stick this in if I have time. In all the ancient literature, and I'll again use the word secular, in all of the secular ancient literature, everything that was addressed in household code, addressed the slave owner, never the slave. Uh, the slave was not worth spending the ink over to tell him, huh, you'll obey or we'll kill you. You obey, we'll burn you alive. You obey or we'll brand you. They did brand them with a red hot branding up if they were disobedient. My, my, my. But in Christianity, not just the slave owner, not just the governor, not just the so-called important people, even the little slaves, they got some press. They got some notice. They were given time to, 
I'm telling you what, with God, he is no respecter of persons. With God Almighty, and I'm praising his name for it, he'll love the little man and save the little man ever bit as much as the big man. Hallelujah. But why all this submission? Verse 19. For this is thankworthy. For this is thankworthy. Let me give you that word, thankworthy. Charis. C-H-A-R-I-S. It is the New Testament word for grace. 130 times in the New Testament, that's the word for grace. Only used 156 times, but here this is thankworthy. What, why all this submission? It's thankworthy to God. It, it'll bring honor and glory to God. Uh, people will see you and they'll say, we don't know what got into him. He used to be ugly and mean and he'd, he'd used profanity at, at his master, but he got saved. He got wrapped up in that church down there. Said he got born again by the grace of God. And now he's submissive. Now he's the best slave uh, that we got in the household. What in the world happened to him? Jesus happened to him. This is thankworthy. And chorus there, chorus, C-H-A-R-I, the Greek scholars tell me this, it implies there's a reward if you'll submit to those in authority. That doesn't mean the reward will come from the boss or the supervisor or the slave owner. The reward will come from God. The reward will come from heaven. This is thankworthy. For if a man for conscience toward God endures grief. If a man for conscience toward God endures grief, Endure means you just put up with it. Pharaoh, you just bear it. All the hurt, all the extra work, all of the bitterness. See, you got a bad man. If you will endure grief, even suffering wrongly, that verb suffering is pasco, P-A-S-C-H-O. Uh, it's, it's what happened to the Passover lamb when they killed it. Uh, bloodshed, pain, agony, uh, even even suffering wrongfully. What does that mean, preacher? Even suffering wrongfully, unrighteously. They're not doing it right. For conscience toward God. Let me give you that idea of conscience toward God. And I'm going to run out of time. God being conscious of how you're living. God being aware that you're trying to obey the Word. You're trying to obey Peter's uh, instructions here. You're trying to live right before God. You'll obey that master, good or bad. You'll not cuss. You'll not complain. You'll not... Same thing with your boss. Same thing with your supervisor. God's watching. Thank worthy. Verse 20. For what glory is it? For what glory is it? That's an interesting word. Kleros. What glory is it? Rumor. Report. How you work on your job, how you act on your job is rumored. It is reported throughout the plant, throughout the, uh, the business. Rumor or report, and it also can carry the idea of praise. If you'll do right, if you'll live right, if you'll be submissive to the sweet spirit, God will give you some praise someday. What glory is it? When you are Buffeted for your faults. In other words, I'm, somebody got on to me. Somebody's rebuking me, but it's my fault. I deserved it. Why? What glory is that? What reward if you're buffeted for your faults? You just take it. it you'll just take it patiently. Uh, uh, hoopo minnow. You'll just take it patiently. But when you do well, when you're doing right, and then they hit you. Then the, that word buffet means to strike in the face with a fist. To, and, and, and you suffer. Uh, they're be, they're uh, uh, abusing you. Per, and you take it patiently. I'm not grumble. I'm learning things. God's teaching me to pray. Uh, my, my humility is growing. You take it patiently. This is acceptable. Chorus. Again, this is it. This puts a smile on God's face. God will reward you if you live a quiet, submissive life, even when you're being treated wrong, and say, Thy will be done, Heavenly Father. Thy will be done, dear Lord. That do well, agathos poeo, 
Peter loves 11 times. It is used in the Old Testament, that verb, doing well, agathos poeo. Peter uses it four times. Peter loves it. Do well, do right, live a pretty life, whatever the, and God will bless you for it.